know, checkpoints, making sure the ball's on the inside of the left foot, off the left shoulder. Good, there's that hip bump. Awesome, bud. It's pretty close right there. Yeah. That was close. Yep. It was a good swing. Sometimes it's a great visual right here. Like yeah. what I'll do is I'll put that ball like that and notice what I do is I have that practice oh, logo yeah, 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 yeah. right here, like at the equator. Oh, here's the equator. I go just up for the guy who's getting a little bit underneath it and hitting up into it too much. Let's remember one thing about the driver. We're not hitting up on the driver. Mm -hmm. The setup is hitting up on it for us. We have a wide stance. That's a more U-shaped bottom of the swing already. Top of the pendulum is the sternum. Ball position's off the left shoulder. Between the width of stance and the forward ball position, we're already hitting up into it. Some of the best drivers in the world, and the, and the ones that I talk to, always are trying to, if anything, hit through it or slightly down into it. Now, that's dangerous for the golfer who has the ball in the middle of their stance with too narrow of a stance. But the majority of golfers who know balls up here, sternum's back here, width of stance, insides of feet, outside shoulders, so always stay centered. Anybody who's watched our channel, knife to the left side of the temple, staying right here, being able to rotate on the back of the ball. We're hitting through the middle of that ball, not up into right, it. Yeah. That's how you pick up some serious distance. If you're hitting little floaters up there, that's exactly how you can hit through the golf ball, not only maximize your carry, but then get the ball running out in the ground also. Here we go, watch this. Be a good ball play here. Let's see it, buddy. See how much flatter that came off? Yeah. Like, he had a little tiny cut there, which is a beautiful ball flight for a guy who hits it as far as Caden does, and that's an easy fairway finder, but that thing came out tw like two stories lower, still carried because it got off the face faster, yeah. and it's gonna narrow the misses. Yeah. Hitting through it, you guys, stabilizes it. Hitting up gets me to back up, and then it releases the club away from me, and that's not what you want. Right. Okay? Yeah, I hear it. You know, when you're here, you're stabilizing it, you're hitting through it, and it's more there, there, there. That's what he's gonna have here. A little bleed or yeah, something. we just got to square that up a little bit, but those are cannons coming yeah. off the face. Yeah. It's just almost like releasing it a little bit, just squaring it up. You know what, buddy? I would just tell you, hit through it, stay centered. Okay. Just stay centered. Keep your yeah. head in a picture frame on the back of the ball. Okay. And just try to feel like you're hitting through it as you do that. The staying centered will get the club to naturally release, you know? Got it. It's close. Yeah, it's a little... It's just a hair right, you know? Yeah. Hair right, but not killing you. Let me see that club. <sighs> What's it set at as far as uh, it's it's like low, it's it's on the low see, setting. This isn't okay. Here's what I would do. I would bump this back. Okay. To nine degrees. Got it. To not force you to have to help it up. Right. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a mistake that I think a lot of people make, and this is not like he's just reacting to what he sees his ball flight doing. So I don't blame him at all. Yeah. He has this down to a seven five right now. Now a lot of guys on tour will actually up their loft closer to ten five, even eleven. To do what? To be able to hit through it and down more, mm -hmm. which will give you the launch you need, right. but gets you actually attacking it and stabilizing the face. Yeah. See, if I have a seven degree, I'm sitting back there and hanging back like, uh -huh. like no other trying to help that thing yeah, up in yeah, the yeah. air. And that's why that club drops at the last minute. Right. And then you get that little high right shot. Yeah. It's like this. Uh, versus it. watch. Boom. There's straight. There's the help up. Okay, Go watch. Can, okay. We, can we fix that actually right now? Yeah. Wait. Just when you know that, like when you're, when you're de-lofting a driver, it takes the face and typically gets it a little bit more open. You know, when you add loft, it actually will get more, more shut. So very important, you know, it's not, be careful if you're hitting it high and you're like, oh, hey, I'm hitting it high right. I'm gonna lower the loft. Well, you might lower it, but you might hit it more right. How funny is that, that like we hit the first one and it yeah. goes, it goes, it goes from being literally like everything 10 right, 10 right, yeah. 10 right, and solid to being dead down the line to your yeah. drop. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> like with a perfect ball flight. That's I'm telling you, it's, it's not just these guys all the time. And that's one thing my dad was big on with me growing up, especially playing uh, junior golf and college golf. He said, dude, I'm always going to blame the Indian, not the arrow. But, but there are some times where. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> We do need to check out the arrow because when you're doing everything right yeah. and you're doing what I'm telling you, then, and I'm not going to sit here and keep making up things for you to work right, on when right. there's nothing else to work on. It's like, yeah. let's just get the club right for you. Yeah. And especially these guys that you just heard, you know, this guy's working out a ton right now. He's in great shape. Um, Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate but, it. but the whole point being, yeah. at his age and especially younger, you know, I mean, you probably had a period where you grew 
like a couple inches a year for like a while. Oh, they oh shot yeah. Six inches one year probably. Oh yeah. I never had that happen to me, unfortunately. But <laughs> but anyways, no, the whole still move it. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yeah. But but anyways, the whole point being, you're at that point in life where you've got to get your clubs checked. Yeah. Every couple months. I mean, especially these guys travel. They change lofts and lies all the time. Oh, yeah. You hit your eight iron and hit some knockdown shots off this mat oh, for, yeah. for 50 balls on a warm day or something when the metal's a little soft. Yeah. Dude, it bends, Weak. you know? So yeah. I, I think it's very important for those out there who really care about their games. It's not always you. Your golf clubs need to fit you. Yeah. And we just saw Caden make the same exact golf swing. We saw two beautiful ball flights just from changing the loft of that golf club. Yeah. Well, it's good. It's good to know. It's a good problem to have, I good guess. Right? Very good problem to have. Very annoying, though, when you don't right. know what it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, shot that's... tracer. Oh, good. I'm not covering it up. Yeah, yeah. that's effing ridiculous, that's... right? At Porzak Golf, we take a lot of pride in having developed some of the best and most consistent golf swings on the planet. We do this through simplicity. Our full swing masterclass will take you on a step-by-step, easy-to-understand process on how to get your golf swing better than ever. Join the many before you who've utilized our Full Swing Masterclass to take their games to the next level and beyond.